In this video, we'll consider amount realized and go through a problem. Whenever we have a property transaction, the first thing to consider is section 1001 calculation of realized gain or loss. This is the gateway provision with respect to calculating property transactions. Now property is broadly defined the tax law. It could be tangible property, intangible property, it could be even thought in your head. The idea is then tax, even though it's not defined in the tax law through the Internal Revenue Code, it's been defined broadly through case law and other areas. In determining realized gain or loss, again, Section 1001, gateway provision, the rule is amount realized minus adjusted basis equals the realized gain or loss. Now, realized gain or loss, a little idea about what's going on here. If you think about gross income, what is considered gross income? You might recall my previous videos, gross income, you need three things. You need an accession to wealth, You need realization, and you need dominion and control. The realized gain or loss calculation comes from the realization element. This is what distinguishes when you own property, whether it's stock, a building, your house, if that property goes up in value, let's say you bought a share of stock for $200 and then a year later it's worth $350. If you don't sell that stock or exchange it or dispose of it, but you still own that one share of stock, by going up from $200 to $350, are you going to be taxed on that? And the answer is no. And the key element with respect to the federal tax law is that you fail the realization requirement. There's no realization event. And the reason why we have this is administrative convenience in our tax system. Think about how difficult that'd be for both you, the taxpayer, and the IRS every time property goes up in value. And also think about losses going down in value. You'd have to trigger that just because the property goes up and goes down. So the idea is that realized gain or loss, we have to record this when we have sale or other disposition, which can be both voluntary and involuntary transactions of property. You need a sale or other disposition of property. So we're talking about sale is anything where you convert property for cash. So that's a traditional, you're selling the property. You can also be exchanging it where you're, mature, you're uh, changing it for another item of property. You can also be, it can be involuntarily converted or condemned, disposing of it. Okay, state comes and, and uh, seizes your property or um, eminent, through eminent domain to build a highway or condemns it. Um, or a hurricane comes and destroys it. All of these go into the section 1001 sale or other dis disposition. Section 1001, the triggering event, which again is calculating the realized gain or loss. And again, that comes back from that definition of gross income, that element of realization. Okay, so now that you understand that, this problem is asking specifically for us to determine the amount realized the amount realized in the following situations. Okay, so we have three different transactions. Before we go through the transactions, we're going to do two things. First is I'm going to give you the technical formula for amount realized. So amount realized is actual cash received plus constructive cash, and above that I'm going to put liability relief. Okay, constructive cash. And I'll explain in a second why it's called constructive cash, but we, we're going to put above that liability relief. We also add to that the fair market value of non-cash property received. Okay, non-cash property. So if you receive a truck or a building or something other than actual cash or constructive cash, the fair market value of that non-cash property minus selling expenses. So let's go through all four of these elements together to get a better idea, okay? So actual cash is, just as it suggests, 
actual cash receipt, whether it's a check or bills or you know currency, it's actual cash. Okay, constructive cash, also known as liability relief. And the idea here is because think about what's going on here is if you, let's say you own your house, your house, you're going to sell your house for $500,000. There's a $200,000 um, liability on your house. You're going to sell your house for $500,000. There's $200,000 on it. Okay. You're going to get $500,000 of cash. You're going to get $200,000 of liability relief. Okay. The other party, let's assume takes on the liability. I forgot, I forgot to mention that. My apologies. Go back to that. So there's $200,000 on the on the house, you're selling it for $500,000 cash, and the other party is going to take on that liability. Okay, they're going to take it on in this in this specific situation. So the reason it's called constructive cash is it's as if we know obviously that the buyer is paying you $500,000 of actual cash. Constructive cash, it's as if the buyer is paying you $200,000 of cash, and you're turning around and paying off your bank. $200,000 because it's the same idea as the person taking on your liability because guess what? In both cases, boom, you no longer are, li are no longer are liable for the liability. You no longer are responsible for it. So that's the key element. So constructive cash is also known as liability relief plus fair market value of non-cash property. As I mentioned, that one's just anything other than cash or ac actual cash, constructive cash. Finally, selling expenses. If you're selling that house and you have to pay um, a realtor, pay an attorney to draft, things related to actually selling the property, getting it ready to use, to sell, whatever it is. Okay? So that's really the, the four-part technical formula for calculating amount realized. There's also another way to think about amount realized, and it's what you're getting, what you get. And that really goes into what these four elements are. Okay? So you have to look through a problem and say, hey, what is... What is this party getting that I have to determine the amount realized? Whether it's a CPA question, my exam question, a law school exam question, maybe in some states you're taking the, the bar and you've got you got to learn this. Whether it's the EA exam, boom, they're going to ask you amount realized somewhere on that exam. You're going to have this in practice. You're going to see this. It's all over the tax forms, calculating amount realized. And the idea, the key is you're asking, hey, what is this party getting? We're using the four-part formula to help guide us to think about all the possible issues, but you're asking at the end of the day, what are they getting in terms of inflows? So let's go through these three different independent situations. So in A, Cherry sells land for $2,500. So look at our four parts, okay? We've got actual cash, we've got liability relief, we've got fair market value of non-cash property and selling expenses. We're only told one item here. $2,500, and it's implied, of course, in the problem, as you know, probably from seeing other problems, to be cash. So we've got $2,500 of actual cash, right? Everything else is zero, right? This is zero, so plus zero, plus zero, minus zero, right? So what does this equal? In A, the answer is $2,500 is the amount realized. So the amount realized in A, AR, I'm going to put, equals in A is $2,500. Okay, so that's important. Keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to erase some things so we can move on to B. Keep our, we're going to keep our little formula here. Okay, so now we're going to go on to B. So in B, same thing. What is the amount realized? So Cherry, then different, different transaction. Cherry transferred land to his medical doctor and received the following in exchange. Okay, so Cherry's giving up land. And we don't care about what Cherry is giving up when we determine the amount realized. When we're looking at the basis, which you'll see in another problem, we focus on what's being what's being given up. But with respect to amount realized, in this problem, we're only asking what Cherry is getting. So, so far, Cherry is giving up land to his medical doctor and receiving the following. So first, $500. Again, $500 in cash. So let's go ahead and put that. Actually, let's read the problem because there might be other cash as well. $500. A dining room set valued at $700 and medical services valued at $3,400. So we have those three things. $500, got a dining room set valued at $700 and medical services valued at $3,400. Okay. So the first element is, do we have any actual cash? Yes. We've got the $500 of actual cash. We're going to put that right there. 
That's the only actual cash. Do we have any liability relief? So is Cherry, so we're, Cherry's giving up land. Is the doctor, medical doctor, taking on any liability? No. So that's going to be, my apologies, I, um, I put the $500 kind of low there. Let's put that up a little bit. Sorry. So we got the 500 actual cash. There's no liability relief because there's no liability on the land that the doctor's taking on. Okay, next, fair market value of non-cash property. Now, it says fair market value of non-cash property, but guess what? It includes services. So this is basically the catch-all for all other items that, are, that aren't actual cash or constructive. But the key is we use fair market value. Boom, that's the important part. So is Cherry receiving any fair market value of non-cash property or services? And the answer is yes. Receive $700 dining room set. So I'll put that down here, 700 and also receiving $3,400 of medical services. So we'll put that right here. And if we add those two together, right, $3,400 and $700, that equals $4,100, okay? Right, $3,400 plus $700, that's $4,100. And then are there any selling expenses? Well, not in this problem. Okay, we're not told about any selling expenses. So guess what? Selling expenses are zero. So we take $500 plus $4,100. Boom, we get $4,600, $4,600, and that is B. The key there is understanding about services, and you also see value is used for both, non um, for both property and services. All right, so now I'm going to do some erasing, and now we're going to move on to C. And C is going to, we're going to finish off the problem. We haven't looked at, we haven't had, um, liabilities or liability relief or selling expenses yet. So you're probably going to see that in C. So in C, again, Cherry, different transaction. Cherry disposes of real property. So that's what Cherry's giving up. Remember, amount realized, we focus on what Cherry's getting, right? What is Cherry getting? Cherry disposes of real property for $3,000 cash and relief of a two hundred of the two hundred fifty-five thousand dollar mortgage that Cherry owes on the property. Selling expenses were five hundred dollars. So let's go through the problem. Do we have any actual cash? Yes. There's three hundred dollars of actual cash. We're gonna put sorry three thousand dollars of actual cash. God, catch yourself there, right? Be careful. Three thousand dollars of actual cash. Is there any liability relief? Yes. There's a two hundred fifty-five thousand dollars mortgage that Cherry owes, and guess what? Relief. So that means you know the other party's taking that on. Relief is signifying, hey, Cherry no longer owes that. This is liability relief. It's as if the buyer is giving Cherry $255,000 in cash. Cherry turns around and pays off the bank with the $255,000. Boom, Cherry no longer has that liability, but that's not what's happening. The buyer is simply just taking on the liability because the buyer never actually paid Cherry $255,000. But we treat it that way in the tax law for various code sections, and that's how we're going to learn it here. So liability relief is $255,000. Okay, so we can go ahead. We can eliminate that. We've got one last item. Do we have any fair market value of non-cash property? No, we don't, right? We're not receiving any property here, just cash and liability relief. But we do have selling expenses. Selling expenses were $500. So maybe Cherry had to pay $500 for a realtor, um, realtor fees. So we subtract away $500. Okay, so we add $3,000 plus $255,000. That's $258,000 plus zero minus $500. So in C, the amount realized is $257,500. Okay, and that finishes up the problem. Again, note that amount realized is what you're getting, and to look at amount realized, you take the actual cash plus the constructive cash, which is liability relief, plus the fair market value of non-cash property or services minus selling expenses. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please continue to watch. I'm going to have a video that goes into adjusted basis. That's the second part of calculating realized gain or loss. And then also watch my other property transaction videos and my other tax videos out there on my channel. Thanks a lot.